It's uh, about a five-year-old boy in India who one night he's out with his brother and he gets separated from his brother and ends up falling asleep on a train. He wakes up, he's stuck on the train. Uh, three days later, he ends up in Calcutta on the streets, unable to speak the language. He's eventually put into an orphanage and adopted out by an Australian family. Um, and then 25 years later, he's turned into Deb Patel. And he's, uh, he's hears about this sort of program called Google Earth. And he's able to finally pull together his memories and, and track, hopefully, a path home. Did you know from the beginning that you wanted to get the family, who this family, this story is about, involved in this film? Absolutely, their involvement was essential because we wanted to make a film that was very authentic and very true to the real events. Um, and we've maintained a very close relationship with them. They've seen the film and they're very happy with it. So, yeah, it was very important. It was pivotal for us. And it was, you know, part of, um, part of our promise to them when we took on the rights is that we would involve them in their thing. I, re I remember being on set and being with Real Sue, watching uh, Deb Saru going to tell his girlfriend that he'd found home. And it was very emotional to be there because Sue felt that it was very much like that. It was very much a moment that we'd captured in the right way. So that's, that's the biggest honor, really. Yeah, finding Little Saru was a very big process. We did a big open casting call in India in three different cities. We saw about 2,000 kids. Um, and then we whittled that down to a smaller bunch and sent our director over there to work with them in, in the room. And we, we really workshopped the kids. We had to find someone who not only was able to take direction and, and perform, but who also had a lot of stamina and could, um, uh, could carry the film um, in their face and by doing sort of virtually nothing, but who, who could also withstand, you know, being on set every day and not getting bored and all of that sort of stuff. But we found a, a great kid in Sunny Pawa. He was incredible. And he went from, during the course of the film, he went from being a little kid who had no idea about acting to absolutely being an actor who knew actually what he was doing all the time. So it was great. Yeah. We had the good fortune of working with a production services company called India Take One Productions, who've done a lot of big movies um, over there, um, Eat, Pray, Love and Zero Dark Thirty and Slumdog Millionaire, all those sorts of films. Um, so they're amazing. Um, we shot a lot of the film in the actual places that, that the events took place, which meant we shot a lot of it in very, very remote parts of India with no infrastructure. So it was very, very tricky and very challenging, but with their help, we were able to achieve pretty much everything that we set out to do. So they were fantastic. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of discussion at the moment about diversity in the film industry. And so, I mean, we're very fortunate with Lion that it is a genuinely international Australian story. And, and um, you know, we were able to cast out of India and out of the UK and everything. So um, hopefully this film resonates with audiences and will show people that a great performance isn't about the colour of someone's skin. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's vital, it's essential, it's, um, it's storytelling. And um, and I think that I think an audience is interested in seeing them the world reflected on screen and not this sort of skewed version of itself. And and so I hope Lion, if people respond, will help what is a, getting a bigger canon of films that that tell different stories. What do you think audiences are going to take, or would you like them to take from this story? Um, I'd like them to call their mother rather than text them maybe at the end of the film if they feel that they've sort of been emotionally moved and I think it's a film that celebrates all types of families and di the diverse nature of that term so I think that it's you know family friends loved ones and I, and I hope that in a way it just is a film where there was a small boy in peril and the world worked and um, he was lucky enough in the end to have two mums who loved him so he's a very special special guy it's super important. Um, I mean, Saru's story is so unique. But then again, uh, a lot of families in Australia did adopt in the 80s. Uh, my friend, uh, Rina, she's got one of her best mates who, who was also adopted from India. But he was adopted by a Scandinavian family in the 80s. So, I mean, it's not, it, it's rare, but it's not, it's not that rare, yeah. you know. So for us to go, oh, wow, it's a one-of-a-kind story, but it, it did happen. Um, Saru was adopted, uh, his brother Mantosh was uh, adopted. Um, and then there's another girl that you see in the film that also a real person um, so you know it was happening it's not it's not as rare as we think and you know it is based on the true story as we've said did you meet your character in real life uh, yeah uh, I met the entire family oh my gosh. yeah oh my God. What was that like? 
Uh, it was, well, I kind of get nervous quite, quite quickly. So for me, it was obviously a, a nervous experience, but um, they were really nice. Um, they were super nice. I remember uh, Garth, our director, was throwing a barbecue. So he, he had basically everyone there. He had uh, the real Briley family, the on-screen family, the older uh, Saru and Mantosh, the, the younger actors playing Saru and Mantosh, uh, Abhishek was as well, and we saw like playing cricket playing cricket with Nicole Kidman and David Wenham on the on the beach in Tasmania. I know it's kind of surreal and, and yeah, I don't know, it's like Garth being a family man, family orientated and, and introducing us to his family and he came to my house when he was in London with his family and, and they came for food at our house and so he, I think he brought that and just kind of made it a, a family unit. Uh, and that that helped a lot. And then meeting Mantos, like we're we're kind of like hanging out in in this house, just like chilling with a beer, you know. Uh, and we're just like uh, you know like two introverts in the corner. And then you got Dev and the real Saru, like in the middle of the room, just like hey yeah, you know, two extroverts, and they come over to us. And there's me and, and the real Mantos like this, and the and so the real Saru is like. It's like good casting, you know, you, you both got your left hand in your pocket, you both got your right hand on, on your beer and you both got coats on inside, just standing in the corner. So it's like, looked at each other and it's like, yeah. It was crazy, I mean, I knew Dev was in it and I met him ages ago, I met him, uh, I met him in Hackney with the director and uh, he was like really rooting for me to get the job and then, he, then when he found out he was like, I mean, I'm coming to London in January. Like, we should go out, and so we, we you know, he he treated me to dinner and had a few brandies, which was nice. Uh, some expensive ones, you know, the EXOs, and then, um, and then, uh, uh, what else did we do? We did loads of stuff, and then we went to, oh yeah, um, Garth, the director, because he knows I like the TV series he did, Top of the Lake, and he knows I'm a fan of David Wenham. But so I knew that Nicole Kidman was going to be my mum, which I didn't really believe. You know, it was just like, really. <laughs> Uh, they'll probably recast me anyway, so uh, I'll just go along with it for now. And then uh, knew knew about Dev, and then and then he was like uh, having a Skype with uh, Garth, and he was like, uh, "So David Wenham's going to be your dad?" And I was like, "Nah, come on, are you serious?" Because he's like in so many movies. Like obviously people know him as like maybe Faramir from Lord of the Rings, but I kind of know him from like Top of the Lake, and then there's a film he did called The Boys, uh, an older film. I went to see Goldstone yesterday. He plays like a sort of bad guy, yeah. and he's so good in it. He's got really short shorts and like these long socks, which are, I don't know. I think that's a fashion thing he's trying. But yeah, he's he's brilliant. What do you think audiences should expect from coming to see this film? Um, see, this is a question that everyone's asking now, and I I want people to go away um, thinking about stuff more than having an expectation. Um, you know, there's there's also a dark element in the film. It's not just a, ha a happy, happy story. It's like really dark. It's not just about loss. Um, and there's these these elements of darkness that we need to like start addressing and, and talking about. Uh, I think on the Lion website, lionmovie.com, it, it does say like if you want to know more, um, let us know and and we'll we'll give you feedback and and tell you what's going on. Um, but it, it's not just India. It's like all over the world. Um, I don't want to say too much because I, one, on one hand I don't want to spoil it and two, like all the research I've done I, I'm still, I still don't feel qualified enough to, to speak about it um, but actually um, our, our wardrobe lady, Cappy Island her mother came in to speak to us about family units and, and problems that develop um, so my character um, there's something called relocation disorder uh, adjustment disorder um, but there's many other problems it's quite layered and she was discussing that to us so you know it's not just about what's going on to young people young children but also how families then have to deal with it um, and yeah I just think it just needs to have like a really big conversation I don't know who maybe the UN or I don't know but it needs to be discussed and hopefully line might be the starting point obviously there's various projects around the world but uh, a, you know a big film like this might make it a more of a an international conversation piece well when I saw the first when Garth Davis was coming to a concert of mine in Melbourne he showed me like a, like just a snippet of the movie it was a still picture of um, a landscape in India no actors in it but he just showed me the picture and you know I didn't know what kind of film it was and he was asking me he would be maybe interested in um, if that Dustin and me are scoring the movie and he just showed the picture to me and I said man that doesn't look like a student film you know because there was a it was such a wide and beautiful shot um, that uh, that was mainly the first 
well, the first initial flame that started in me. And then, of course, he asked me if um, Dustin, if I would be interested in collaborating with Dustin. And Dustin is a very old friend of mine, and uh, he didn't know. So that was the next coincidence where I felt like, this is awesome. And from there, I think things were just falling in the right place. It was, but it was great. I mean, it's a really, it's, the film is, is two periods in time in a person's life. And in a way, it's, it's two parts of a story. And so to have two voices really, I thought, brought a lot to the film as well. It's a lot of emotional weight to carry for one composer. And it really, you, when you enter the world, it's, it, it's already starting in this emotional space. So to carry an entire film and to keep that tension, I think it, it helped to have someone helping me and, you know, and like we were helping each other and like giving each other feedback on, on we had a good you know, time. We were yeah, really it, it, really, it really helped because it, I mean, there was times when I was working on the film that I, I, I felt really emotional. It's a really powerful story. and. That it's you know there's just days where you just feel like you've gotten hit in the chest and it's it's really beautiful and then you get to sort of get get help <laughs> to get through it but it's but we're really honored to be part of the film. Yeah. To be quite honest, we were just trying to be very sensitive and you know stepping back in in terms of you know giving the the, the film a lot of space. But at the same time, we wanted to express our emotions. And uh, when you start like crying or you think about whatever, some like your family and home and stuff like that, you can be easily getting into very whatever awkward, like full-on uh, music that you compose. And th I think that was the balance that we really tried to find a way of pulling ourselves back and finding a strong expression. And I think that's mainly what we worked on the whole time. But also Garth was a really amazing collaborator. He has an incredible sense of restraint in, in the process of his film. And I think it really shows he tried to treat the story really in a very respectful way and not over dramatize it. I think that biopics can easily go there and and he wanted to keep something that people could really relate to and I think that all of us were trying to create this feeling that it, it wasn't we were being swept away in this cinematic story that you that actually makes you think about your own loss, your own connection, your own family and that ultimately was the goal I think what we were all trying to accomplish. Well, to be quite honest, it's a very modern film, so it doesn't really matter if it's playing in India, Australia, or whatever in a German, in a small German village. In a way, the the story itself is something that is very global and unique. And I think Garth was not looking for. He was. There are two chapters in the movie, but that have more to do with the childhood and uh, him, like uh, Saru being an adult. Maybe he was looking in the first place of having two different music representing that, but when we started, Dustin and me, we just felt like we don't, we can't actually separate that because the childhood is always, you know, reflected in the, when, when he's an adult, so, yeah. What kind of journey did you go on with your character to understand that? Um, as soon as I got the part, uh, Garth was like, you know, we're going to have to make you go to the gym, you're going to have to eat some food, put on some weight and grow your hair. So those were my marching orders and uh, I called up my agent and was like, look, I don't want to work for eight months. You know, we had a good lead up and I was like, you know, with a, with a role like this, you kind of have no other choice but to, to put that amount of time in to do it justice. And a lot of it was uh, uh, kind of uh, isolation, you know, traveling through India on these trains and spending time in orphanages and writing diaries and all that kind of stuff and you know it was, it was a really enlightening experience you know i'm a mummy's boy and that's why i did this film because it is about mothers and sons and you know i think that's what the world needs right now is love and you know this is what this film promotes you know it's about love transcending con continents and uh the power of resilience you know this young boy i was just saying earlier you know when i got lost at a supermarket from my mum, it was it's a nightmare and it just felt like it was never going to end but for him to be separated on this train from his family and then get hurtled across this continent and have to survive by himself and to do so hey, it's just it's incredible yeah